I, um, gosh, what just happened? I thought maybe a dog fell on me. Um, to me, quickly, with the civil unrest and the types of things that are going on right now, how do you identify yourself in, in, uh, in the country? And the civil know. unrest is so upsetting. I mean, you know, we've all cried at things that we've seen recently, and I've, I've been signing petitions like mad, you know? Yeah. Because we need, we need change. Um, yeah. We need some reformed areas, but um, it's very, very sad. It's very emotional, and I think when I wrote The World Goes On, I think I just wanted to give people some hope, and myself included, because I do feel like better days are ahead of us. And I like, I hope it gives people, you know, three and a half minutes of happiness. Uh, sorry. I, I said, I feel like it, I hope that it gives people three and a half minutes of happiness. You. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. My phone keeps ringing. You're popular. No, oh, I don't know about that. Well, right. Yeah. We have to encourage it and be part of Absolutely. the solution. And signing Absolutely. petitions and being proactive and finding a way to make a difference instead of sitting in silence and just kind of watching yeah. things. It's important exactly. to be involved. It really is. And you're part of a community of country music, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. seems to be a very strong community. And uh, I know that you are part of a benefit for Anita Cochran, maybe a, a, oh, yeah. a few years back or so, along yeah. with... Uh, so many other artists, and I saw a group photo of, of you um, with your community. What is it like being a part of a strong community like that? Is it a, a big sense it's of family? It's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, Anita, I've been on the road with her, um, touring with Ty Herndon, and, and she always plays with Ty. And right. she's a really good friend. I'm actually doing a show for her coming up July 10th that's for her charity. Um, and yeah, she's made a ton of friends, and People like Terry Clark, you know, is our friend. And, yes. And why Nona's. I know your group. For her, yeah. I mean, yeah. Pam Phyllis, Lori Morgan, they're all so great, you know? Yeah. It was, it was a lot of fun doing that show and just sitting back and watching other people perform. And who, who's going to be on your new album with you? Well, I'm not saying right now. I kind of want it to, be, it to be a surprise. Okay. How did it feel to get to bring your daughter to the Opry? Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, she absolutely loved it. Took to it like duck to water. She actually got to sing with me when she was really little, like two or three years old at the Ryman. So she's done the Opry House and the Ryman. Now she can say she's done it. And as we continue to age, our, our voices change. And I really never thought about that until I listened to a interview with Kathy Matea talking about mm -hmm. how she had to change her songs up to be able to sing them. Is that a taboo subject in the music industry? It, are people afraid to I don't talk think about so. it? I, I think some people maybe, you know, kind of cling to wanting to do the songs in the same key that they've always done to prove that they can reach a note. Mm -hmm. And I don't really feel like that. For me, I think, you know, as we grow older, things change, voices change. My voice has definitely changed. I still have um, a high range, but I sing all my songs a half a step down from where I recorded them you know, 20 years ago. So, and I'm, I'm not, you know, I think the most important thing is to be able to keep going and do a 90 minute show, not, you know, wonder why my voice is strained out, you know, because I'm trying to reach notes, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I have no problem with lowering my keys and talking about Janie Fricky is the one who told me she? years ago. She said, you know, just remember when you lower your key or do a guitar solo, you, your vocal cords get a break. And she's so right. She's wow. so right. It's an interesting thing that I, I rarely hear people talk about. But yeah. I think it's, such a, it's part of the reality of, of being in, a, in an industry like yours. And, and you the old to, saying, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. Right. And that, that's definitely true. Like when you take a break, like this much break of singing, I mean, thank goodness I've had some live streams and the mm -hmm. recording and everything, but it's, it's, I'm not singing half as much as I would normally be singing on the road. Right. All of my shows were canceled. All of every entertainer's shows were canceled, and some do better than others, where they have financial stability to be able to sit home for right. six months. But some, like me, we rely on touring. You know, we rely right. on the money that we make out on the road. Sure. For me, um, the future is scary. It has a big question mark, but I just have to keep going. I have to keep believing, just like everybody else, believing that everything's going to be okay. And having faith that things are going to come back and be maybe not like what how we knew it to be before, 
Um, but hopefully we get back to some semblance of normalcy. Are the rules going to be different going into a show now coming out of the COVID era? Are there I think so. They're, gonna, they're definitely distancing and there's, we probably won't have a meet and greet. Right. Yeah, you know, things like that. Right. Take pictures six feet apart. Yeah. That'll <laughs> yeah. be interesting. With all of your hits, do you consider any one to be your signature song? Probably Arizona. Yeah. And I think this is very telling of anybody. Very insightful. If you had one last meal, and I know you mentioned food twice already, so. Um, <laughs> Isn't that weird? Yes. <laughs> so if you, if you had to choose one last meal, what would it be? It would definitely have to be Italian food. Yeah. Uh, maybe Greek food. I don't know. Probably Italian food and probably like a lemon pasta with chicken. chicken. I got some in the refrigerator. Really? <laughs> well, I ate right. it last night. <laughs> I'll be right over. Yeah, I love it. Are you familiar with the show Kath and Kim, the Australian comedy? No. Oh, my gosh. Jamie, you have to check this out. Really? It's so gut-busting funny. What's it called? Kath and Kim. It's a mother-daughter sitcom. And okay. It's on Netflix. Yeah, okay, I'm going to check it out as I eat my lemon pasta. <laughs> there you go. Now, that's a good day. That's a great day. Throw in a glass of wine.